Let's begin by looking at the purpose of a SCADA communications protocol. We'll look at the purpose and objectives of a SCADA communications protocol and provide a few examples. The primary purpose of a SCADA communication protocol is to allow remote monitoring and control. To do this, the protocol must support the transfer of data between devices. One step of this process is to replicate the database from one device to another. What are the objectives of a SCADA communication protocol? First, the protocol should provide standardized rules for data transfer. This helps ensure interoperability among vendors. The protocol should ensure reliable data transfer. This is often accomplished via a cyclic redundancy check, or CRC, or by a checksum to detect and possibly correct errors that are introduced during transmission, for example, by noise on the line. A SCADA communications protocol is likely to need to support advanced features such as timestamp data or freeze operations. Freeze operations allow remote devices to report data as of a specific time or event, regardless of when the data are actually read. The protocol should provide data quality indicators. These indicators may include such information as out-of-range readings, counter overflows, or forced values. Features to prevent, or at least detect, unauthorized use or monitoring of the data are often required as well. Finally, the protocol may be required to minimize overhead in order to allow optimum use of the available bandwidth. This can allow more economical communications options to be used, even though they may have lower bandwidth available. More advanced protocols support report by exception, or RBE. Instead of reporting all data in the device, RBE only transmits changes or events of interest. This can result in reduced bandwidth and less processing because only changed points are transmitting, resulting in fewer points being sent. Attaching timestamps to RBE data allows the master station to recreate the sequence of events that occurred in the outstation. Note that RBE can be either polled or unsolicited. With polled RBE, the master polls the outstation for events and only changes are reported. Although some bandwidth is used for polling, this is still more efficient than protocols like Modbus, in which the master station must poll all data. With unsolicited RBE, the outstation sends the changes as they occur, without having to be polled. Polled and unsolicited RBE will be discussed in more detail later in the course. Let's look at an example topology. For this example, we'll be looking at a typical substation, although many other topologies are in use. The master station communicates with the substation RTU via DNP. The substation RTU, in turn, communicates with multiple relays, also using DNP. The connection between the substation RTU and the relays can be serial point-to-point -point connections, such as RS-232, serial multi-drop connections, such as RS-485, or via a local area network, or LAN. The relay engineers often have a terminal and some sort of remote access, such as a dial-up line. This connection is used for configuration of the relays. Although this slide shows the engineer's terminal connection via a dial-up modem, this is only one way to achieve this connection. With DNP, the virtual terminal feature can be used to carry the configuration communications over DNP.